Well, that's it for the build. Happy to report everything is working beautifully. You can see we've got a little bit of excess water. Prior to this whole setup, I tested these bags out to make sure that they absorb the water and wick it up into the beds, and they do. All right, so I'm gonna be doing a bit of reorganization today in the garden. What I'm gonna do is actually take down this last section of hugel culture that I have here with a cattle panel trellis over top. I'm going to utilize this soil to help to fill some of my raised beds that I'm gonna be creating. And I'm gonna level this area out and create a flat space, which I will then set up an automatic watering system that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. This is pretty cool. So I'll be leaving these two main beds here, but this last section is what I'll be taking out. Now we've got years of breakdown here. I started dismantling it and I want to show you some of these larger pieces of wood. They're just flaking apart. They've got mycelium growing throughout. This is actually beautiful hugel wood that I can use in other raised beds. Here's some of the hyphae strands that was growing throughout the wood. And all of this soil, which I've been putting some of my spent worm castings on for my compost tea brew, we're gonna utilize this to help to fill some of our raised beds for this new garden setup. All right, well, I got both these Hugel culture mounds completely taken down. As you can see, I've got one pile of dirt over here and another over here. This is all the Hugel culture wood that came out of those mounds. I'm going to reuse that again in some of my raised bed gardens. So anyway, you can see what I'm up to here. I've got six of what's going to be eight total beds laid out right now. I'm going to be putting two more over here where that mound of dirt is, but I'm going to be using this soil along with some potting mix to fill the grow bags that are going to go in these little kiddie pools. So I'm going to start working on these garden beds first and utilize most of the dirt in this pile here. Clear this area and add two more little pools right there. So the first thing I'm going to do here is pick up these pools. Now that I got an idea of how I'm going to lay this out and I'm going to put down some weed block. The last thing I want to do is deal with weeds popping up in between my automatic grow beds. I actually got a bunch of this weed block that I was using as a temporary fence near the back of the yard. I'm going to reuse that for this project. All right, so I made some progress last night. It was dark, I had my headlamp on. But you can see here where we're going with this. We've got our kiddie pools laid out with the perfect size grow bags inside the pools. These are 40 gallon grow bags that are about 31 and a half inches in diameter, which is perfect for these pools as it leaves just the right gap for us to have some water flow into here to create a wicking pot. Now you can see with all these bags, what I did is I filled them halfway up with some of the soil that I excavated from the Hugel Mound. And now I'm just gonna top all these grow beds off with a bit of outdoor potting mix, which has a lot of good stuff in it, including worm castings. I'm also gonna add a little bit of granular fertilizer in here. Then I'm gonna douse the beds with some compost tea to load it up with beneficial bacteria and microbes. But before we jump into that, I need to continue adding a little bit more weed block over here, finish off this last section. All right, so we got this last section of weed block down line the rest of these pools out all right that's nice and clean we won't have any issue with weeds popping up between our beds and I do plan on putting some nice mulch over this weed block just to give it that natural appearance now another benefit to putting your grow bags inside of a pool like this is that it should prolong the life of the grow bag Hopefully we get several years out of them as they're not going to have direct contact with the soil and all the different components of the soil food web that could help to break down 
and rot the bottom of the bag out quicker. So whether or not you're placing them in a pool, putting your grow bags on some weed block or even some pieces of cardboard could be a good idea to prolong their life. So these are the bags that I'm using and these are available on Amazon. The main thing, if you're gonna use a different grow bag, you could use whatever size, even sandbags would work in a system like this, is if you are using one big bag, I do recommend trying to get one that's just 31 inches across. That way you got that little gap. And just like with these other grow beds here, I'm gonna fill the first half of these two beds up with some of the native soil that came off the Hugo cultures. And then we'll continue filling the rest of the bags up, amending the soil, and getting things planted out. So three five gallon buckets gets you about halfway. Well guys, I stayed out past dark and got all these beds filled. The filling wasn't the time consuming part, it was mixing the native soil with the bag soil. But we got all these beds completely full now. And it was important that I got this done tonight because I need to drench these beds with some compost tea I've had brewing for the last 24 hours. I don't wanna allow that to go too long or some of those microbes are not gonna survive. So I need to drench these beds tonight. Anyway, I don't mind gardening at night. There's something very pleasurable about it to me. As long as it's not too cold and I'm enjoying myself. So here's the compost tea I've got brewing. This is just going to bring an abundance of life into these beds. Beneficial bacteria, microbes, nutrients, minerals. We're just loading up the bed with all the good stuff. All right, my friends, well, it's time to wrap up this build so we can get to growing. As you can see here, I filled up all my grow bags last night. I also drenched each one of the growing mediums with some compost tea. So things are ready now to get hooked up to my automatic off-grid watering setup. We're gonna be doing the same thing that I did over yonder. Let me show you. This scaled down version, I'm using some concrete mixing tubs and some sandbags to grow out my cauliflower here. And using this 32 gallon garbage can, we're able to add our water in here with a small submersible pump. Only runs off four watts. And this is all operated off this small little Jackery power station. That little guy right there can actually power a setup like this for months at a time, since the pump is only four watts. So the way this setup works, and I made a whole video explaining in detail how you can set something like this up, but this Jackery powers on and off with the use of that little switch bot. So I have this set on a schedule where it pushes the power button on and off at my desired times, which powers the AC outlet on, which turns on the submersible pump. And then again, it extrudes the little push button mechanism there at my desired schedule, usually about two or three minutes later, and it turns the unit off. So we don't need our backup power bank to be constantly on. Many of them, like the Jackery, automatically turn off after 12 hours of remaining idle. So one of the major benefits to having a system like this over a gravity-fed float valve setup that has overflows that always keeps water in your bin is I can schedule my on and off so that in between waterings, the water completely dries out, as you can see here. And the soil in these pots is still very moist. So I still don't need to add water in here. But whatever you determine is the proper cycle, maybe it's once every two, three, four, five days that you need to add water in, you can program that in. Then you don't have any standing water. And this is what happens when the bot is activated and the pump turns on. So having this system run for just a few minutes will fill up the bottom of the container a couple inches and allow that to wick up into these pots. 
So I'm gonna be using a slightly larger submersible pump to feed this system since the water has to travel a greater distance to feed all of these raised beds over here. This is a 25 watt pump. You could probably get away with a 15 watt pump. This is 400 gallon per hour. I know they make them also in 15 watts, but this is what I have on hand. And although they come with different size connectors on top, they tend to be half inch and greater. So they're a little larger than the inner diameter of the aquatic line that I'm using to feed the system. But to hack the system, I'm just gonna slightly heat up the tip of that vinyl tubing with a heat gun, which will allow me to then slip it over this larger diameter shaft. I'm also gonna be using a 44 gallon garbage can over 32, give me a little bit more time in between having to do a refill. All right, so I'm gonna start off by drilling a half inch hole towards the top of my garbage can here. I'm gonna pop a grommet in there, and that'll be the main feeder line to all of these eight grow beds. And I'm using these half inch inner diameter grommets, which are appropriate for the tube that I'm using. Run that down to the bottom. Although it's going to be a tight fit, let's slide a hose clamp on there too so we can further secure it. Alright, so we got it over two of the barbs. That's good enough. That's not going anywhere. Alright, so now that we got that part set up, I'm going to now go around to each and every one of these little kitty pools and drill a half inch hole and pop a grommet and we'll run our feeder lines into each one of these pools. So I'm going to go about three quarters of the way up the side of the pool. That goes right through since these pools are so thin. And again, we'll pop our grommet in there. So now I'm going to go around to each one of these pools and do the same exact thing. All right, so we got all the holes in the pools, and now I'm going to begin to hook up the vinyl tubing. And I'm just using these barbed tees to split the line between all these different raised beds. I'll show you how I hook that up here in a moment. All right, so we got all the beds hooked up, as you can see. I left a little bit of slack in the line, just in case I need to move stuff around a little bit. What I did at the end of this row, I just put a T and wound the line up into this next row of beds, placed the tee there and kept going. Now, at a later date, I'm gonna be putting mulch over this weed block. It's gonna also cover up the water line, help to keep it cool, make everything nice and clean. Now, the last step here is I'm gonna splice in these little valves going to each container. That's gonna allow me to dial in the amount of water each container gets. So 
if I'm growing celery in one container that needs more water and the other container I'm growing kale, I could dial it in so that the kale receives a little less water than the celery. So by adding in this little valve, I can actually turn down the pressure to reduce it to the containers that are closest to the pump, which is gonna allow it to more evenly distribute through the rest of the line here. And to kill the siphon, we're gonna just put a little hole there. So it takes a little fine tuning, but we got it. And we've got a little fountain here, which is the result of our siphon hole, but that's easily resolved by slapping a lid on top of the can. So we'll just have to time it out and see how long we need to have the water run before it begins pooling up and not just soaking right into the bottoms of the bag. Well, that's it for the build. Happy to report everything's working beautifully. You can see we've got a little bit of excess water. Prior to this whole setup, I tested these bags out to make sure that they absorb the water and wick it up into the beds, and they do. Just a great job at doing that. So the next step, like I mentioned, putting down some mulch over this area. I may even decide to dress up these little pools with some burlap or something to give it a more natural appearance. But I am very excited and looking forward to what we're gonna be able to grow in these raised beds, all automatic. You can plug it into an outlet on a digital timer. You can put it on something like a Jackery a battery power station and have it all completely off-grid. Some of these beds I have set up next to cattle panel trellises so I can grow some vining crops. I could also throw some burlap or some shade cloth over the top here to offer a little bit more shade in the summertime. And as you can see, they're already very moist because of the compost tea last night. But these pots are large enough to plant several plants. I plan on doing eggplants and peppers, celery, some squash, and we'll see what else. We'll keep it a surprise. But you're going to want to stay tuned to follow along with the updates and to see what we end up growing in here and how everything turns out as the season progresses. I want to thank you all for tuning in. And if you're interested in building something similar, I will drop links to all the different material that I use to put this project together. But I do encourage you to make it your own. If you can get any ideas from this project and utilize items that you may already have on hand or have better access to or, or even cheaper whatever the case may be, then get creative and make something like this for yourself. I find that automating annual garden beds has so many different benefits. It can allow you to head out on vacation, but having your beds like this is also going to protect them from slugs, snails, wood lice, earwigs, and if you got dogs running around, they're not going to be able to just run through your garden bed as they could if it was directly in the ground. And these raised beds allow you to control your soil medium there's so much life in these beds and the area is large enough that the roots are going to have plenty of room to grow. And these fabric bags have the added benefit of providing air pruning to your plants. So as the roots of your plants extend to the border of the bed, they prune themselves off. Unlike a hard plastic wood or concrete pot where the roots could twirl around and bind up inside the pot. And we should be able to get years of service out of these grow bags as well. These kiddie pools I picked up at Lowe's. I think they were about $11 a piece. And the color of these pools doesn't bother me at all. As I had mentioned, I might line the outside with a bit of burlap, which will even further protect the plastic extending its life. But these were meant to sit out in the sun throughout the summer. So I'm hoping that we get more than one season out of it. Time will tell. And so with that, I want to thank you for watching. Have yourself a great rest of the day. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Take care. I'll be talking to you again soon.